My humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. How are you, Guru Maharaj? I'm fine, thank you. How, how are you? I'm fine too, thank you. Can we begin? Yes, Guru uh, Maharaj. So you mute mu everyone. Yes, I need to share the screen, Archana. Yes. Okay. Om Jnana Tamarandasya Kyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanya Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Recording in progress Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavanda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare So we're reading the Krishna book and we're up to chapter number 660, where Krishna teases Rukmini. Right. Krishna had told Rukmini, he said that I'm not a good husband for you, you should marry another man, somebody, there's so many nice kings, they're better than me, you should go and marry one of them. And so when Rukmini heard this, she fainted because she, she just, the thought of it was unbearable to her. So Lord Krishna comforted her and brought her back to consciousness. And then she she understood that Krishna had only been joking with her. And so now we're going to hear how Rukmini responds to Lord Krishna. Rukmini doesn't get angry with him. She doesn't chastise him. But she's going to speak. She's going to glorify Lord Krishna. And she, she says to Krishna, actually, Krishna, you're right. I'm not worthy to be... You said, actually, it's me. I'm not worthy to be your wife. It's not that you're not worthy to be my wife. I'm not worthy to be your wife. So, Lord Krishna has spoke about the different kings of the material world. There were many different kings like Sishupala who all were very eager to marry Rukmini. So Rukmini says actually the kings of the material world are the the, the three modes of material nature. It's the three modes of material nature which are actually the controllers of the world. And Rukmini says to Krishna that 
you are situated in the heart of everyone, so you're completely aloof from the three modes of material nature. Mm. Then Rukmini continues, she says to Krishna that you said you always, you're always uh, the enemy of the different worldly kings. And Rukmini said, I think the actual kings of the world are the senses. They're the most powerful and they control everyone. And Rukmini says to Krishna, I, I know you always maintain uh, Enmity, you always maintain, you're always the enemy with the material senses. You're against them. You're not under the control of the senses. Rukmini says that you're you're the controller of the senses. You're known as Rishi Kesha. And then Rukmini says to Krishna, she said, you said that you don't have any royal power. And Rukmini said, that's true, I know, that's correct. You don't, you don't have any royal power. And not, not only do you not have power over the material world, but even your servants don't have power over the ma those people who are attached to your lotus feet. They also give up any control of the material world. The, 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 your devotees, they consider that the material positions are the darkest position in the material, uh, in life. And they stop progress in spiritual enlightenment. And Rukmini continues, she said, those people who are your servants, who are your good devotees, but they don't like to have any power in the material world. And we know also that you also don't like. And you said, you said that you do not act as an ordinary person with any special aim in life. And that is true. And even your great devotees and servants who are known like great sages and saintly persons, they remain in a, in a condition so that no one can get any clue as to what is their purpose in life. And 
สภาวะจุดมุ่งหมายแบบไหนของชีวิตเนี่ยเขาจะไม่รู้เลยว่าเขาเนี่ยเอออยู่So the human society looks at these people like they're crazy. And to the common people, it appears like they have whatever what the aim of life of these people is. The devotee's aim of life is a mystery to the common people. แล้วก็ต้องหมายของชีวิตสําหรับคนที่เป็นสาวกเนี่ยมันจะเหมือนกับเป็นสิ่งที่เล่นลับสําหรับมนุษย์ที่เป็นมนุษย์ธรรมดาทั่วไป And the lowest of mankind can know neither you nor your servants those people who are the lowest of mankind they don't know you and they don't know your servants แล้วมนุษย์ที่อยู่ในระดับที่ต่ำที่สุดเนี่ยจะไม่รู้ถึงพระองค์แล้วก็จะไม่รู้ถึงผู้ที่รักใช้พระองค์ cont- somebody who's the contaminated human being they cannot even imagine the the Lord's pastimes แล้วบุคคลผู้ที่มีมนตินเนี่ยเขาจะไม่สามารถที่จะแม้แต่จินตนาการเกี่ยวกับลีลาของพระองค์ได้ So Rukmini says that the activities and the endeavors of your devotees is a mystery to the common people. So if they, if common people cannot understand the activities of the devotees, they will never understand the activities of Lord Krishna Himself. All kind, all the different energies. And opulences are all used in your service, but still, they they remain at at your shelter. บอกว่าเออความเข้าใจเนี่ยเออแรงกับตัวทั้งความมั่งคั่งแล้วก็ทั้งหมดเนี่ยถูกถูกนำไปในการรับใช้พระองค์แล้วก็พวกเขาเนี่ยก็จะมีพระองค์เป็นที่พึ่ง And Rukmini said to Krishna that you said that you have no money, you're penniless, you don't have any money. But this condition, this is not actually poverty. So Rukmini explains this. She said, "Actually, there is nothing in the world except for you. You are everything." You don't need to own anything because you 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 are everything. ไม่ไม่มีความจําเป็นที่จะต้องเป็นเจ้าของอะไรเลยเพราะว่าพระองค์เนี่ยทรงเป็นเจ้าทรงเป็นเจ้าของทุกสิ่งทุกอย่าง You don't need to purchase anything. เราท่านเนี่ยไม่มีความจําเป็นที่จะต้องซื้ออะไร Other people, ordinary people, they have to get they all have to purchase things. They need to get more things. But you are everything. You don't need anything. And all contradictions can be adjusted because you are absolute. And all contradictions can be adjusted because you are absolute. 
ก็จะสามารถก็ปรับตัวเข้าได้เพราะว่าความจริงพระองค์เนี่ยทรงเป็นสัจธรรมสมบูรณ์ You don't possess anything You don't possess anything but nobody is richer than you พระองค์เนี่ยไม่มีความเป็นที่จะต้องได้อะไรแล้วก็ไม่มีใครเนี่ยที่รวยไปกว่าพระองค์ In the material world, if somebody is going to be rich, they have to possess a lot of things. But in the case of Lord Krishna, he can he can possess nothing, and at the same time, he's the richest. พระองค์ทรงไม่มีความจำเป็นที่จะต้องเสืออะไรแต่ถึงขนาดพระองค์ก็ยังคงเป็นบุคคลที่รวยที่สุด So in the Vedas it says that you may have no material hands it's in the Vedas it says Krishna has no material hands and no legs ในพระเวทเนี่ยได้กล่าวว่าพระองค์เนี่ยทรงไม่มีพระหัตถ์แต่ก็ไม่มีพระบาทที่เป็นวัตถุ But at the same time You accept everything which is offered in devotion by the devotees. And you have no material eyes and ears, but still you can see and hear everything everywhere. So you don't possess anything, but the great demigods, they accept prayers and worship from others, and they come and worship you. Yeah, people worship the demigods, but the demigods they come and worship the supreme lord. The work the come the demigods come to get the mercy of Krishna. So Rukmini said to Krishna, "How could we say that you are poor?" And then Rukmini says, "You have also said that the richest section of human society does not worship you." And Rukmini said, "You have also said that the richest section of human society does not worship you." So Rukmini said, "This is right. The rich people they don't worship you." People who are puffed up with material possessions, they're always thinking of using their wealth for sense gratification. บุคคลผู้มีความมั่งคั่งทางโลกวัตถุเนี่ยคือเขาจะคิดว่าจะใช้สมบัติของเขาเนี่ยเพื่อสนองประสาทสัมผัส So when a poor person may become rich, then he he makes a plan for his sense gratification. เมื่อคนจนเนี่ยกลายมาเป็นคนรวยแล้วนะก็จะจับหาวิธีเพื่อที่จะทำกิจกรรมเพื่อสนองประสาทสัมผัส So he thinks how to enjoy his money. So under the under the external energy, the material energy, he thinks that his money is used properly when he uses it for sense gratification. So นักวัตถุนิยมเนี่ยจะคิดว่าเงินของเขาเนี่ยได้ถูกไปใช้ในทางที่ดีแล้วเมื่อเขาได้ใช้ The, the materialist never thinks to use his money for the service of Krishna. And Rukmini said to Krishna, she says, Krishna, she says, Krishna, you said that persons who have nothing are very dear to you. 
and they've renounced everything. Your devotee wants to possess only you. So a great devotee like Narada Muni, he doesn't have any material property. And he's very dear, he's very dear to Krishna. And devotees like Narada Muni, they don't care for anything. They only care about Krishna. And you've said that a marriage between persons equal in material life if they're equal in beauty, or equal in riches, or equal in fame, or renunciation, then that's a good match. But Rukmini says to Krishna, you are the supreme source of all opulence. So if anybody has any opulence in this material world, they must have got it from you. So it's, in the, it's stated in the Vedanta Sutra like that, that you are the supreme source for everything. And you are the reservoir of all pleasure. So people who have knowledge, they only want you and they don't want anything else. They just want Krishna. They don't want any material things. So to get your blessings, they give up everything, even the realization of Brahman. You are the supreme, ultimate goal of life. And you are the reservoir of all interests of the living entities. Those people who are actually, uh, who actually have, just a minute, those people who actually have, uh, good desires, people who have proper desires, they simply want to desire the service of Krishna. And they give up everything to get that. And they only want to associate with you. So in the in the in Krishna consciousness, people are not feeling pain and pleasure of material life. And 
pain and pleasure of material life are simply due to sex attraction. So everyone, it doesn't matter if they're a man or a woman, they should want to be an associate in Krishna's service. They want to be in the association of Krishna as their as his servant. Nobody can be equal to Krishna. So in the perfect society, uh, Krishna is in the center and everyone is his servants. And when Krishna is in the center and everyone's serving Krishna, then everyone will be happy, they will be blissful and they will enjoy life eternally. And Rukmini said to Krishna that, Krishna, you said that only the beggars praise your glories. Rukmini said to Krishna that, and Rukmini said, that's right. But who are the beggars? We have to understand, who are these beggars? These beggars are all great devotees, liberated persons. In the people, people in the renounced order of life. They are all great souls and devotees, and they have no business, no, they don't want to do anything else except glorify Krishna. And these great souls, they forgive even the worst offenders. So these beggars, they actually do their, they're making spiritual advancement in life. And they tolerate all the disturbances of the material world. So then Rukmini says to Krishna, don't think that I, when I married you, that I accepted you as my husband. Uh, do not think I accepted you as my husband out of my inexperience. Don't think I was it. Don't think I wasn't experienced. I actually knew what I was doing. <laughs> And Rukmini said, I followed all these great souls. I followed their path. Just like they surrendered to your lotus feet, I also surrendered my life unto your lotus feet. And 
And you said that you don't have any wealth. And that is right, because you give yourself completely to all these great souls, to all these great devotees. You give yourself to them. So Rukmini said, I knew, I, know, I knew this, I knew this very well, and that's why I rejected even such great personalities as Lord Brahma and Lord Indra. And Rukmini says the, the time factor, uh, the great time factor acts under your direction. And the time factor is so powerful that it can destroy everywhere within the creation in a moment. So Rukmini said, I considered all of this and I thought that these kings like Jarasandha and Sishupala and other kings who wanted to marry me, I thought them to be not, they're not any more important than ordinary insects. And then Rukmini said, My dear, all powerful son of Vasudev, you said that you have taken shelter within the water of the ocean because you were afraid of all the great princes. But Rukmini said, I don't agree with this. This is not right because I've had experience with you and I, I never saw this. You came and at the time when I was supposed to be married, you kidnapped me in the presence of all these great princes. And when you kidnapped me, then the other kings, they came to chase after you, but you just took up your bow, and just by giving a jerk on your bow, you, you drove all of these kings away. In this way, you gave me shelter at your lotus feet. I remember how you kidnapped me the same way that a lion takes its share in a, from a, in a hunted booty, drives away all the small animals within the twinkling of an eye. So the lion is the king of the jungle. Uh, 
ในป่า So sometimes the lion will hunt and he will capture something to eat. สิ่งสิ่งโตเนี่ยก็จะไปล่าแล้วก็จะได้ของจะได้อาหารมัน So the small animals, the small animals, they may also want to eat, but if the lion is there, they cannot go in the presence of the lion because the lion is so powerful. So Rukmini is giving this example. She said that Krishna kidnapped her just like that in the same way. So then Rukmini continues talking to Krishna. She says to Krishna that I cannot understand your statement about women and other persons who have taken shelter under your lotus feet. บอกว่าข้าเนี่ยไม่สามารถที่จะเข้าใจคำพูดที่พร่องตัดว่าพร่องเนี่ยส่งเป็นเออสมัยผู้หญิงในกลุ่มบุคคลอื่นๆ Because Krishna had said that women and other people also who have taken shelter under Krishna's lotus feet they they that they often pass their days in suffering they feel so They're always crying and they're suffering so much. But Ruk, Rukmini says, from the history of the world, we can see that there were great princes like Anga and Prithu and Bharat. And Yayati and Gaya said they were all great emperors of the world. So they And nobody could compete with them. They were so powerful. They, no, nobody would dare to compete with them. But to get the, the to get the shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna, they gave up everything. And they went into the forest to do renunciation and to do austerities. So they accepted this position. They took that position just to get the shelter of your lotus feet. So Rukmini asked the question. She said, "Does this mean that they were lamenting, or they were feeling very sorry about it? They were not joyful. Were they feeling very sorry? Were they lamenting when they did this?" Of course, they were not suffering. They did it. They, they did it in ecstasy. They were feeling transcendental bliss. Then Rukmini says to Krishna. You have told me that I can still select another person from the princes, from the royal families, and I can divorce from you, and I can marry a new husband. But Rukmini said. 
I know that you are the reservoir of all good qualities. And great devotees, saintly persons like Narada Muni, they're always engaged in your service. And they're always singing and glorifying you. And if somebody just takes shelter of such a person like Narada Muni, he immediately becomes free from all material contamination. And when he comes in direct contact with you, with the service of Krishna, then the goddess of fortune bestows her blessings on him. So under the circumstances, what woman, under the circumstances, is there any woman who has once heard of your glories from authorities and has somehow or other relished hearing about you, would they ever be foolish enough to agree to marry someone else in the material world? Would they ever agree? Would anybody be foolish enough to agree to marry someone who is always afraid of death and old age and disease and rebirth? So Rukmini says, when I accepted your lotus feet as shelter, I did it with proper understanding, with proper consideration. I understood the situation very carefully. So Lord Rukmini says to Krishna, you are the master of the three worlds. <coughs> and you can fulfill all the desires of all your devotees. You can fulfill the desires of all the devotees in this world and in the next world because you are the Supreme Lord of everyone. And Rukmini said, that's why I selected you for my husband. I thought you were the only person fit to actually be my husband. So you can put me in any species of life according to the reactions of my activities. I don't care where, where you put me. I only, my only ambition is that I may always remain fixed to your lotus feet. 
ต่ว่าความฝักใฝ่เพียงอย่างเดียวของข้าเนี่ยคือขอให้ข้าพเจ้าเนี่ยได้อยู่ภายใต้พระบาทรูปดอกบัวของพระองค์ Because I know you can deliver your devotees from from the material existence. And you're always ready to distribute yourself to your devotees. Then Rukmini says to Krishna, "You have asked, you have advised me to select one of the other princes, like Sishupal or Jarasandha or Dantabakra. But what is the position? What is their position in this world?" บรรดาเจ้าชายอย่างเช่นชิชุพาลยาลาสันดาดันชาวัรตรา์พวกเขาพวกเขาเนี่ยมีสถานภาพอะไรทางโลก They're always doing a lot of hard work to maintain their household life. พวกเขาเนี่ยต้องทำงานอย่างหนักเพื่อที่จะดำรงรักษาชีวิตคาริฮะ They're just like bulls. They're just like the bull who works hard in the fields all day and night. พวกเขาเนี่ยเหมือนกับบัวที่จะต้องทำงานหนักทั้งวันทั้งคืนเหมือนกับลา Or sometimes they have the bull to use the, to do the oil pressing machine, and the bull has to go round the circle, has to go round and round and round to crush the oil and the, use the oil machine. บางทีเขาต้องใช้กระมือเนี่ยในการที่จะผลิตน้ำมันอะไรเขาต้องใช้กระมือในการที่จะให้มันเดินรอบเดินรอบเดินรอบจนทำทำเป็นการปัดแล้วก็จนมันกลายเป็นเอ่อ And they're simply miserly, like cats. And when they are, they are like a cat, like a cat. And they have become like slaves to their wives. So any unfortunate woman. Who has never heard about Krishna, about the glories of Krishna, then they can accept a man like that for their husband. สำหรับผู้หญิงที่ไม่เคยที่จะได้รับฟังคำสรรเสริญของพระเจ้าพวกเขาเขาเนี่ยจะไปมีความสนใจที่จะได้สามีแบบนั้น But a woman who has heard about you and that you and that you are praised in this world. And in the halls of the great demigods, like Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, then they will not accept any other man except you as a husband. A man in this material world is just a dead body. ผู้ชายในโลกวัตถุนี้เนี่ยก็เหมือนกับร่างที่ตายซาก And the living entity is covered by this body. แต่สิ่งมีชีวิตเนี่ยก็ถูกปกคลุมด้วยร่าง The body is just a bag of skin. A bag of skin and bones, and decorated with a beard and a mustache, and hairs on the body, and nails on the fingers, and hairs on the head. Hmm. Ah, ถูกปกคลุมด้วยผิวหนังแล้วก็ถูกร่างกายนี้ปกคลุมโดยมีเอ่อผิวหนังมีเล็บมีผมมีหนวด
คราวบนร่างกายบนมีผมบนศีรษะสิมีปอยประดับเขามีกล้ามเป็นมัดมัด So in this bag there are bunches of muscles and bundles of bones and pools of blood. แล้วก็มีกล้ามเนื้อมีกองกระดูกแล้วก็มีการบดเลือดที่ผสมกับอุจจาระ And it's, it's mixed with all kinds of stool and urine and mucus and bile and horrible polluted air. And it's enjoyed by all kinds of different insects and germs. แล้วก็เป็นการผสมระหว่างอุจจาระปัสสาวะเสมหะน้ำดีแอดลมเน่าเหม็นอยู่เสมอแล้วก็มีมแมลงจุลินทรีย์ที่รื่นเริงอยู่ในถุงผิวหนัง So the foolish woman, she will accept like such a dead body as her husband. ผู้ชายหญิงที่โง่เท่านั้นที่จะยอมรับร่างกายที่ตายซากนี้นะมาเป็นสามเมฆของตัวเอง And in, and she, in her ignorance she will fall in love with this dead body and she will think this is her dear companion her best friend และด้วยความโง่เขาเนี่ยเขาจะตกหลุมรักเขาคนนี้ในฐานะที่เป็นสุดที่รัก So this happens only because a woman never actually developed a real taste for the message of Lord Krishna and hearing about Krishna and the glories of Krishna. They never ever got the real shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna. ที่พึ่งแห่งกว่าพระบาทรูปดอกบัวของพระชนม์ Rukmini is talking more to Krishna. She says to Krishna, "You are self-satisfied." ดังอรุณมินีก็กล่าวต่อบอกว่าพระองค์เนี่ยทรงมีความพึงพอใจในตัวเอง You don't care if I'm beautiful or if I'm qualified or not. Doesn't matter to you. พระองค์ทรงไม่มีความสนใจว่าข้าเนี่ยสวยงามหรือว่ามีคุณสมบัติหรือไม่ So you're you're not attached to me and it's not that's not astonishing also that's quite natural แต่พระองค์เนี่ยก็ทรงไม่มีความยึดตาข้าซึ่งอะไรก็เป็นธรรมชาติหรือแล้วไม่แปลกนะ You cannot be attached to any woman เป็นธรรมชาติของพระองค์แล้วที่พระองค์ไม่มีความยึดติดกับผู้หญิงคนใดคนไหนเลย She may be very exalted, she may be very beautiful, but Lord Krishna is not going to be attached to her. อาจจะมีสถานภาพที่สูงส่งหรือว่ามีความงามสวยงามมากแต่ว่าสิ่งเหล่านั้นเนี่ยมันไม่ได้ทำให้คุณชนะลงไหลหรือยึดติดกับเขาได้ So you may be attached to me or not, but my devotee. And attention will be always engaged at your lotus feet. So although Krishna is not attached to Rukmini, Rukmini is very attached to Krishna. ถึงแม้ว่าพิชาจะไม่ยึดติดกับรุกมินีแต่รุกมินีเนี่ยมีความยึดติดกับพิชามา So r u k m i n i has pure devotion for Krishna. เพราะรุกมินีเนี่ยมีการวิจารณ์เสียสละใจที่บริสุทธิ์ต่อพิชนา And she is always serving at his lotus feet. แต่นางก็ทำการรับใช้พระบาทรูปดอกบัวของเรา So the the material mode of passion is also Krishna's creation. ระดับปัญหาของโลกวัตถุนี้เนี่ยก็เป็นการสร้างของคริสนันอันรุกมินิเซส if you if you passionately glance if you use your passionate glance upon me then I, this is the greatest boon for my life this is the best thing which could happen in my life บอกว่าเมื่อใดที่พระองค์เนี่ยทรงมองมาที่ข้าอย่างมีปัญหาข้าเนี่ยยอมรับว่านะแม่มันเป็นประโยชน์อันยิ่งใหญ่ส
And Rukmini I'm very ambitious for the, these auspicious moments when you will glance on me with passion. So we see how Rukmini replied to each and every word of Lord Krishna's. Lord Krishna was thinking he would make Rukmini angry, but he didn't. He didn't make her angry at all. But Rukmini took each and every word of Krishna's and she replied to them and she showed how, ev uh, how, how she understood everything Krishna was saying. Krishna had used these words to, he thought he will make Rukmini angry because he knows how much Rukmini loves him. But he never thought that Rukmini would reply the way in which she did. It was a surprise to Krishna. So Krishna replies to Rukmini and he says to Rukmini, he says, My dear chaste wife, my dear princess, I expected, he said, I, did, I, I expected such an explanation from you. Yeah, I was saying that Krishna was surprised, but Krishna says, no, I wasn't surprised. He said, I expected all this from you. And I, the only reason why I spoke all these things, joking words from you, is so that you, uh, that, because you, I wanted that you would, uh, you might be cheated of the real point of view. Krishna said, my purpose, what, my purpose has been served. And Krishna said, every word which you have explained, every word which I spoke, which you explained, is completely correct, and I, I approve it. And Krishna says to Rukmini, you're my dear most wife, you're the best of my wives. I'm very pleased to understand how much love you have for me. So, no matter what ambition and desire you have, and no matter what you might expect from me, I am always at your service. And it's a fact also that my devotees 
and my servants are always free from material contamination. Even they don't ask me for anything, but I always give, I, they, they never ask me for liberation, but they're always, they never get contaminated. My devotees only want to be engaged in my service. And, but they depend upon me. Even if they are found to ask something from me, that is not material. So the You, you are the said sentimentality question. Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj, and dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All Gurus to Shila Prabhupada. Uh, my question is uh, Do we uh, make decisions with our mind or with our intelligence? <laughs> Do we make it? Yes. Do we? Yes, Guru Yes, Guru I got it. Lao niya tasin chai doi kham chala kong lao lua doi panya. Well, sometimes we make with the mind. Sometimes we may, may we may use the intelligence. It may not be the same every time. Bang man may nang kan nai thu kham. Sometimes we're impulsive. We don't listen to the intelligence. We just listen to the mind. The intelligence is there to guide us, but we may not always use it. And sometimes we don't even use the mind, we just simply follow the senses, simply the senses act without the mind even. So it's, it's not the same in every situation. We say, of all the senses, the tongue is the most voracious and difficult to control. So, the tongue is very difficult. We have to con control the tongue. We have to use the tongue to chant Hare Krishna and to take Krishna Prasadam. So the senses are difficult to control. The mind is the king of the senses.
and higher than the mind is intelligence. Intelligence is used to discriminate, to decide what is right and what is wrong, what is good and what is bad. Are you going to use the intelligence? I will try to use my intelligence, Guru Maharaj, but uh, does, it, uh, in, uh, does it depend on uh, our level in uh, devotional service? Well, it's a question of where is your consciousness? You see, you may not be engaged in devotional service, but you still have a mind and intelligence. Okay, Guru Maharaj, it's, thank you. It's not that everyone is going, not, of course, not everybody knows, but even people who are not devotees, there are people who are not devotees, they also understand they have a mind and intelligence. They may be like jnanis or like yogis, so they understand they have a mind and intelligence. They're not devotees, but they understand about the mind and the intelligence. That is more the platform of jnan. Jnana yogi or impersonalism like that, they understand the mind and the senses, they conquer over the mind and the senses by intelligence. Mm -hmm. They have to tra use the intelligence to conquer the mind and senses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There are, you know, the senses are like wild horses and the mind is the reins and the driver is the intelligence. Uh, so sen senses are like horses. Horses are very powerful, very difficult to control. So actually your question is actually who is the doer? Who is the doer? Is it, is it the mind or is it intelligence? Who is responsible? Ultimately, the doer is actually the individual living entity, the soul. Mm. <laughs> Because the initial desire comes from the soul. The initial... Yes, Guru Maharaj. So every living entity is responsible for their own activities. Have we trained our mind? Have we trained our senses? Have we cultivated good intelligence? So many things to be considered. But the individual living entity, the spirit soul, he is actually responsible for his own happiness and distress and for his suffering and his ultimate liberation. So we, we cultivate intelligence, the, 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 uh, that we have to hear the scriptures and cultivate good knowledge that will help us to control our mind and senses. So, 
ปัญญาของเราในการควบคุมประสาทสัมผัสเนี่ยอันนี้เราก็จะสาวสามารถพัฒนาได้ But sometimes we become contaminated we become influenced by lust and then sometimes the senses will act independently of the mind and the intelligence แต่บางครั้งเนี่ยก็มันก็เป็นแล้วแต่พอบางครั้งเนี่ยจิตใจก็จะถูกควบคุมปัญญาไอจิตใจก็จะควบคุมปัญญาอะไรอย่างเงี้ยแล้วก็มันก็จะมีสถานการณ์ที่ปรับกันบ้างในบางครั้งโอเค Thank you Guru Maharaj it's very clear now Thank you so much Hare Krishna How are there any other questions Arjuna Vaishnavi uh, Madhuri also Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj please accept my humble obeisance all glory to Sri La Prabhupada um, So uh, from uh, this uh, discussion of uh, Rukmini, can I? Uh, Rukmini is speaking as if uh, she is an ordinary living entity. Uh, is it right, Guru Maharaj? She thinks herself as a. Yes, right. She's taking. She's a very humble soul, and she said she's willing to take birth in any different species of life. But she just wants to have the shelter of the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. Yes, g u r Maharaj. And also, it's so great of Krishna to tell uh, that uh, to be at her service, something like that. I'm always at your service, uh, so it's very nice, g u r Maharaj. Yes, Krishna appreciates his devotees. Krishna's bhakta vatsala. He reciprocates with the pure love of his devotees. So Rukmini was, of course, she's the best of, she's the most dear of his sixteen thousand one hundred and eight quiet queens. She's the best. And so Krishna has a lot of love for her, and especially when she's spoken so nicely and replied to everything Krishna has said in such a wonderful way. So Krishna is very pleased with her. Yes, good m a r a r a j Um, here we are. Uh, we read that Rukmini is explaining that only a foolish woman will accept a man of uh, material world. But sometimes we see in the history that uh, many chaste women who are attached to some imperfect men are celebrated so much. Uh, uh, is it uh, why is it like that, Guru m a r a r a j But I think uh, it's not the highest perfection, right? Right. Their their perfection. They may be good as chaste wives, you know, but it's not the highest level of devotion. Rukmini is speaking. It's a very transcendental relationship between her and Krishna, because Rukmini is the goddess of fortune, and Krishna is the supreme personality, uh, Lord Narayan. So their relationship is like that, Lakshmi Narayan. But other people, other husbands and wives, the woman may be very great, which is very chaste and very devoted to her husband. And so, in terms of moral principle, she's a very great lady, but not in terms of devotion, not necessarily in terms of devotion. Yeah, but but do they have a greater chance uh, to pick up Krishna conscious or something like that? Well, I I don't know about that. If they if if they get the mercy of a devotee, then they will. Yes, we know. For example, you know, Ravana had his wife was considered a very great woman. What was the name of Ravana's wife again? Ah, uh, Mandodri. Manodri. Man Man. Mandod Man. Yeah. Man Mandodri. Uh, Mandodri. 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 Right? Okay, Mandodri. Yeah. Yeah. So she. I don't know. Yeah. She's, she's famous as one of the great chaste ladies, and then you have also Gandhari. She was also very chaste, you know, very famous as a chaste follower of her husband, but they were not devotees. But they were very chaste and moral principles, you know. In the particular lilas, you know, when they came as chaste women, 
we don't see them showing a great devotion, but still they, they certainly were very, very chaste ladies. So they would get some very elevated position in the material world. We don't know exactly what would happen if they actually ever get liberation and go to the spiritual world. But certainly as far as wives, they, they're very chaste and they're wonderful, very good example for ordinary ladies. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, we need to see the example of chaste wives. It's very important in the modern Archana, you have to mute. This is my cooking. Who is that one? Okay, okay, I got it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is there any other questions, Arjuna? Uh, in the chat box, Gurmash, I think from from China devotee, but I don't know who can read for us. Sachi Madaji is here or no? I'm not oh, sure. We'll just leave them till next uh, Tuesday. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll get them. Okay, okay. So no, no more questions. Okay. So then we'll stop here and we'll be back yes. tomorrow night with the nectar of devotion. Yes, Guru Okay, okay so thank you. Thank you very thank much, Srila Prabhupada. Ki Jai. Jai. Or Bhakti Vinda Ki Jai. Jai.